What is up, down and sideways, you beautiful individuals? This right here is League Unlock. That is Mark. I am Eric for your first 2024 installment of any type of power rankings. Week one already in the book for the winter split for the LEC, which means week one power rankings and sweeping overreactions across the board. Finally, into the real deal power rankings. No more way too early. We've got actual games to be great in these power rankings off of the LEC, giving us that early treat. Let's waste no time and dive in 10 through 1. And unfortunately, especially after that last game out of Team Vitality, they got to be sitting at the bottom of the barrel. Hillisang, he can look like the best Rakan in the history of European like legends one day, and then the next day, he's going zero and seven, and you're left scratching your head. That was not the look that we were going for with this one from Hillisang for Rakan. Not the angle that Vitality was going for to start out this winter split is the way that you got to look at things. I think you can put equal blame all across the board. Of course, the most recent game is really looking at that bottom lane and specifically a lot of the problems with Hillisang. You know, you can look at someone like Vateo and say, well, we're not quite getting MVP Vateo so far. We're getting more or less XL Vateo, and that's not the one that you wanted at the very beginning. And then you go even further into that top side and look at Photon, and I think you still can have issues and questions about what he's going to offer and bring to this team. Vitality, this was an ugly start. Shortest game time out of everyone this week, which is not good when you're going 0-3 and they're the only squad that did not get a Baron for their side. So yes, they're sitting in that 10 spot. GX come in at number 9 because they picked up a win and... You know, even though they're only one spot ahead, I'm feeling much better out of the week one performance out of them than uh, Team Vitality. Obviously, Jackie's has already showed some pretty hype moments. Jackie's has been showing us those hype moments. Of course, the the Nico is that pick really identifying with what he's been able to do. I think you can look at this Giants roster and feel solid enough about this first week, even at a spot like number nine. But it's more so just out of a situation at number nine of, you're not really, really behind the eight ball like an 0-3 situation is going to put yourself into. Still waiting to see kind of a real ramp up for Giant X. I think Ignar is someone that I'm still keeping that eye on as, as this person who's returned to the LEC and what he can do in this region after his time with NRG. We should have known. A 0-2 abysmal looking rogue against a 2-0 G2. That's a trap game. Look back historically. We should have known. We should have guessed it. Uh, obviously, rogue looked leaps and bounds better and G2 running it down just a little bit. But can't take away from how bad rogue looked the first two games, but still very happy to see them play at a much higher level here. Yeah, Rogue looked uh, poor enough in those first two games that this result and this performance against G2, not enough to dig yourself out of that hole that you've created yourself, finding yourself in this territory of the power rankings. But what you did see in that G2 matchup, Mr. Zoellis down in that bot lane, making sure that it's popping off. He, he said, you saw a bad Rakan with Hillisang? I'm gonna show you that crystal, crystal clean, pristine Rakan. That LFL MVP Rakan. Yes, sir, the difference maker, and he was a mega player in this one, making sure that it was Rogue, getting those plays off, making that advantage, and then good props to Rogue for keeping that snowball rolling, keeping the pressure onto a team like G2. And I saw some people say, that's it, Larson's Azir just hits different. And I go, uh, he played him yesterday, and it really wasn't to the same level. So even some inconsistencies there, but solid bounce back from Rogue. I know CNK Corp. At 0-3, people are panicking. You saw has this team not number 10 on the list. Well, watch the games, guys. I know the fans can be a little bit insufferable, but they had probably the hardest opening week schedule, and they had some bangers. They've had the longest game time, over 35 minutes out of anyone in week one, and that's because there were positive moments. They were competitive. They have a positive goal differential at 15. It's not all doom and gloom yet. 
it's not all doom and gloom yet. This is a a very kind of unique situation at 0-3 to find yourself into the, this type of area of a power ranking, but it really is based off of all those games and how competitive, how close they have been within those games to know that, you know what, this is not a, a team that I think is gonna lame duck their way through the winter split. They will find their way through. They will get that breakthrough. It's a question of, of when, and the problem really is gonna be though for K-Corp, you're running out of room on that runway for when in the winter split, but what they've shown in their games, I really gotta believe that week two, they're gonna be the ones pushing through. And remember, I know it's three short weeks this first round uh, of action in the LEC winter, but really you're looking at three wins and you're making it to the next round where you can start getting things sorted out. So still plenty of opportunity for them to bounce back. Imagine the difference for Team Heretics after game one, what the general consensus was of entire careers for Perks and Yankos. And then they play two more games and end up finishing two and one. And all of a sudden, ah, the GOATs are back in EU, even though it was an easy schedule and they still looked only okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm very far away from going to the GOATs are back type of situation with Team Heretics. But you know what? They do get that double check mark this weekend where they do pick up the two wins, make sure that they are in, in better position, better standings towards this next week for the LEC. And I think you can look at the individual players uh, on this team and what they were able to do and even look at kind of how almost things stalled out, I want to say, in the third game of the week, but just still finding a way to cross that finish line and get the nexus done. Not the most convincing or star individual performances i will say wonder looked pretty good on nar in this one so solid bounce back but they are at the bottom of those two and one squads as we slide in to that top five just ahead of them is team bds the lone loss in week one coming against g2 i'm really hoping they're not just gonna be an adam three trick kind of team again we were hoping an entire offseason would give some more depth to this squad still too early to really know about that but you know garen scion out of adam although he seems to love playing scion for some reason I, you know what i'll take it something a little a little more traditional outside of the gods champion pool that adam likes to run through the lec still works for bds and i think you can still be the ass in gods just cut out set throw in the scion <laughs> yeah, you can roll with that one. I'll deal with it. And then you look at the rest of the things for this BDS team, and that is really where I still think you've got some question marks. You're still waiting to see has that improvement, is that next level unlocked for the rest of the members of BDS? Because as we've talked many times, that is the path to that increased level of performance, consistency, eliteness, all these things for this team in the LEC. It's getting everything else to match up to how dominant a player Adam can be. And the reason BDS is kind of below all these other 2 and one squads is the wins were against Vitality and Giant X, which are, you know, the two bottom teams on this list. And ahead of them, you look at Mad Lions, who had the crazy back and forth, insanely hype K-Corp match uh, with the Spanish versus the French. That was the most electric the LEC Stadium has been. Even in playoffs, you can include some of the time. So absolutely love that for the league. That combined with how dominant uh, Mad Lions Koi was against Team Heretics in round one, deserving of a top four start. I mean, that matchup, number one, was straight up traditional sports. Levels of fandom yeah. and cheering and everything going on and the banter back and forth. The crowd, that was fantastic. And that's one of those things where, again, at some point, at some times it does rub off as insufferable from K Corp, but the way that their energy forces any other squad to rise up and match it and bring their fandom to the next level is something to be noted. Them Mad Lions, that fandom, hey, they got it going with the boys, El Yoya and the crew getting a revenge shot, getting it back into it with that 2 1 split for the week. Mirwin. You know, we hyped him up. He's got a little crazy champion pool. We've seen the Akali. We've seen the Gwen, him being a featured carry. And he might quickly become the most exciting top laner to watch in the entire LEC. It's wide open right now in the LEC for someone to roll through and create that type of difference. He was a mega player in the win against K-Corp. And didn't help that Cabo didn't have a great uh, level of performance as well. G2 still in the top three. We always have at least one, usually 
way more than one regular season game where you're going, ah, gee, what are you doing? And that just happened to be one of them today. It seems to happen more often than not when Yike is on a champion like Trundle. Uh, yeah, keep them keep on the interesting things. Not the yeah, Trundle rolling on through into the jungle. And Caps as well had a rough game you could look at. This is certainly one where you, you a quick mental reset if you are G2. And I know it's easy to just go, oh, yeah, but they're probably not, they're not going to get a team like G2. We've seen this enough times that you can have that faith in this type of blip in the radar, mental reset. What we've seen for the most part already this first week that should be more so the G2 that you're counting on seeing the remainder of these weeks in the LEC winter split. Basically never going to be panicking for G2 until they're fully eliminated from a season because, you know, that's the only time to worry about them. Their record is almost irrelevant. Then we get to that tippity-tippity top of that table. We had the marquee matchup Fnatic versus SK Gaming. Despite the loss, still think Fnatic slots in nicely to that number two spot, but how about the only 3-0 squad, SK Gaming, Niski and the boys. Everyone probably doubted this roster, ourselves included, and the huge chip on their shoulder. They've been dominant through these first three games and deserve that top spot. There's no question. This is the squad. This is the team that is feeling the best about themselves this week. No doubt about it. What they were able to do. Niski and the boys. Of course, SK proving all the doubters wrong, all the haters wrong, and getting it done with this 3-0 week, and especially finishing it off with the match against Fnatic. This has been the, the full revenge tour for Niski, and he's made sure that it is that strong start for SK Gaming. My man's played on so many teams, he gets a revenge <laughs> matchup in most of the games in the league. And, and he's such a nice guy that it's so hard to ever want to cheer against Niski versus some organization. No way, I'm rolling with my boy Nesquik, and he's making good work of it. You know, of course, it's, it is important to look at what else has been going right for this SK team. I think Isma is one that a lot of people have jumped on and, and, and really rightfully so for his good hot start. But I gotta be looking at my man Irrelevant up there in the top side. I think that he has been under the radar and consistent in the LEC and building himself up, building his experience. And we're seeing it now on, a, on this version of SK where he can kind of take that reins uh, as a more veteran type of guy behind what we've got in Niski already for the team and compounding it into that 3-0 and record. And then throw in the bot lane of Exekick and Doss, playing with the confidence we haven't seen since SK was a legit playoff squad going back to last winter and spring. They were the only team to get First Blood, Rift Herald, and 100% of Barons this week. All three games, they got them, which is why they're sitting in that nice 3-0. and And Niski, being on a team that doesn't have big expectations, it usually feels like he goes on a squad that has world's aspirations. Well, guess what? This underdog SK team, it's early, but world's aspirations might be what they're looking ahead. It's only week one, but they're at the top of the table for now. That's it today, though, for League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you beautiful people. Thanks for watching, as always, and we will catch you on that flippity flip.